Good morning, Curvy Kings. Good morning, Curvy Queens. Cupid's on quarantine, but I'm not. Happy Valentine's Day from your girl, Asia Paris, a.k.a. Queen Fabulosity, honey, yes. And so, it's Valentine's Day. Why not have a nice cup of joe? Cheers to you. Love never fails, honey. Love never fails. And so, if I'm all unfocused and out of frame, it's because I don't wear contacts on the weekend. But uh, I came on here, guys, to show y'all some Valentine's Day love, to make y'all laugh, to give y'all a story time, and sing y'all a ballad. Oh, yes, I'm going to sing to y'all today. And got Joe on my chin. You already know what it is. My Joe trying to take over the biz. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, smash that subscribe button. I promise you the content on this channel is binge worthy. You will want to come back. You might not want to know why. Like this girl is quirky. This girl is silly. This girl is stupid. But why do I keep watching it? It's addictive. I have to come back. I have to come back. I think I can. I think I can. I do. Ooh, ooh, yes. So, I got some pillows over here, honey. I got me a navy pillow, and it's so cute. I got me a peach pillow, honey. And it's got ruffles on it, too, honey. Yes. And what other kind of pillow you got, queen? I got a Vera Bradley-inspired pillow, honey. Yes. Yes. And I'm holding these pillows because I'm about to tell you a story time. The queen about to get all out of her comfort zone. Yes, squeezing pillows and things. But let me tell you, before we get to the love ballad, because you know it's Valentine's Day. And I'm going to sing a song to all my subscribers. It's about commenting and things of that nature. So, stay to the end of the video because I'm going to sing to you. Yes, like Marilyn Monroe. Get with it, king. Get with it, queen. A Valentine's Day ballad. But I digress. When my sister ain't with me, I can do what I want. Because she's the manager, but she can't get me because it'll be uploaded before she knows. Yay! <laughs> Stop acting up, girl. Anyway, so last night, I was sewing my sister's hair in. Because, you know, she's a professional. She had to switch that thing up every one to two weeks. She had to come up in there looking like a boss. Like a boss like she is. And so, we was talking about yesterday's, your love got me looking so crazy right now. I love that. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it, y'all. Because me and my sister was acting the food and having a good time. She had so many valid points on there about getting away from toxicity. And because I was being so wild and cognizant of y'all's time, I was like, kind of breeze past that so i was like no nah, i can't do the kings and queens like that we got to come back and talk about these toxic relationships and toxicity and stuff like that because who going into the rest of 2021 worrying about a joker not me and who is gonna allow their kings and queens to be out here acting a fool i bust the windows out your car uh you know no i ain't gonna do that so let me tell you about a time when I was not so smart in a relationship and I was so toxic in a relationship and Minister Renata, my sister, AKA hashtag fitness queen had to save me on the interstate, the whole interstate, honey. Let me sit my jaw and let you know that about six years ago, I almost took me and my sister out on the interstate acting a fool. So go get your popcorn. I'll wait. Okay, so you back with your popcorn? Good, because this is going to be the best story time ever. Honey, I digress. So, my nephew was having the one we had the um, party for, Deuces Day. If you have not watched Vlogmas, it was supposed to be day six because his birthday December 6th. But Deuces Day, go watch it. That's my nephew who I'm talking about. So his first, well, actually it was his second baby, was being born. R.I.P. Evan, we love you, girl. So, Jaleel, my baby, you see him. He took over the um channel one time, Halo Finity. If you have not watched that vlog, when my great nephew hijacked the channel, why haven't you? Go back and watch it. 
So he was making his entry into this world. And me and Renata, proud great aunts that we are, honey, hashtag fitness queen, hashtag queen fabulosity, was like, we got to go to this hospital. Now, this is pre-COVID and before the world went crazy. You know what I'm saying? So we're out getting balloons and getting all this stuff and we're going to celebrate his entrance into the world and we can't wait to meet him and, you know, these first-time parents and all. Now, me... I'm in a relationship with a uh, fake T.I., a uh, Dietrich hat not a whole mess, honey. Honey, let me tell you, when you start getting where you want to be, your face going to start getting slim, like my double chin, my quadruple chin going to start disappearing. Then my breast going to lift up a little bit, and my stomach going to get flatter, and the silhouette is going to come at people who was not checking for you before you start transforming for me gonna start trying to holler they gonna slide in your dms they gonna be on facebook in your inboxes they gonna be commenting and sending you emails they gonna holler at you and burp, 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 like you at a construction site or at a gas station honey and so this particular person i blame it on mommy let me show you she did it mama did it it was the year 2009 i was living on my own i had been single for a long time and I had bought my house and I had not nested. I was by myself, you know. And all I did was when I first bought my house, I would work 18 hours a day. As a vision center manager, I would work my vision center, do my profit and loss statements, and just work, 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 work. Like Rihanna, work, 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 honey. I would work, 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 work. So anyway, long story short, um, his mom died of ovarian cancer and so my mom thought that he could use a friend she thought that he needed someone positive to encourage him and everything so she gave him my number my mama did because mm -hmm. she thought he was the good little boy from sunday school back in the day you know when we was in sunday school together when i went to stun him people used to pick at him and i used to let him sit by me and i played with him in the churchyard because of the fact that I didn't want people to be judging him for what he was going through or whatever. And I ain't going to put too much specifics because I don't want him or his family to get offended. But I'm telling the truth. It's my truth, the truth. And I sip my jaw. Because they already know. Anyway, back to the subject. So long story short. Mama gave him my number. And he and I talked on the phone every night after his mom died. And so from like 2009 to 2012, every night I fell asleep on the phone, talking on the phone with him. And I ministered to him. We laughed, we joked, we reminisced, we caught up. I learned stuff about his story. And so I developed a grave level of compassion for him, for what he was going through. Because his mama was a minister of the gospel. He was the only child. And it was like, I really learned. I fell in love with um, his story and his life and his plight. So not knowing the whole time, the reason why he got all this time to talk to me and the reason why he's so free is because he all on probation and he can't go nowhere. So what else can he do but talk on the phone with me? Who knew? And so he, I think he told me after years go by, but by then I hadn't developed the affinity for him. So 2000, late 2011, going into 2012 i would come home to visit my honey baby which is my great grandma and he and i would go for ice cream we would hang out with my grandma we just was hanging out we was just like friends like you know in sign language friends we was cool as like cucumbers like two flat tires long story short um my grandma was like oh he kind of handsome and so when i see him I hadn't seen him since high school. And in high school, he was like an ugly duckling. But he did do a glow up on you. He started kind of looking. I wouldn't say he was a swan. But he was like, you know, he had his own nice vehicle. He dressed well. And he was polo down. Everything nice. He had a swagger about himself. Rico Suave type deal, what he called himself. But I digress. And so I felt that in the fact that he was very compassionate. So something happened. And my um, central heating and air unit went out at my house. 
This boy drove from Perry, where I live now, nearly two hours away to bring me a window unit because I was hot while I was waiting for the um repairman to come and fix my air he came and brought a window unit to me i thought that was very nice and very kind and very considerate and i was like if he's that kind of guy then maybe i should relax my standards uh, never relax your standards i always said i never let a dude drive my car i always said i'll never um date a person with a baby mama i'll never um date a person that's on drugs i'll never date a person that is um not on the same intellectual level as me and i never date a person that got a real criminal record because of what i do broke all those rules every single one of them regret a lot of it but hey, we don't live in regret. We make changes around here. So long story short, let me tell you. In 2013, when I left everything, like I told y'all on the How Did I Get Here video, I came home and I just worked on myself. I worked on myself completely. I wasn't checking for this dude. I wasn't checking for nobody from my past. I wasn't studying it. I was trying to do a road to discovery to find myself. So in the midst of finding myself, like I said, I was at the prime of my fitness level. I was getting into those size 14s. 12 was right around the corner for me. I was um, finishing my degree and de defining myself in the world of my career. So, something catastrophic happened in this guy's life. And his father was no longer here. My mama came home from church. Mama, mama, Captain save him. I'm just like her. She's like, oh my God, do you know? Did you hear what happened? And I'm like, no, I didn't hear what happened. I hadn't talked to him in a cool year. You know, I had kind of winged it off and I wasn't talking to anybody. I had one friend that was real cool. He was a, um, he, but he was a no for me on relationship wise. It was a deal breaker because he had a little daughter and she was a brat. And, um, so I had a friend, we hung out together. We went to, um, the movies we ate together. We did a lot of stuff, me, him and his daughter, but we weren't dating. I wasn't dating him. We were just really, really cool. We went to church together. We hung out together. Matter of fact, I missed that friendship with him. But we weren't, I wasn't attracted to him. You know, it was like a Biggie and a Lil' Kim type situation. If that's how he looked, like Biggie Smalls. I wasn't attracted to him. So anyway, um, Mama came home, told me this dude had gone through such a catastrophe. So long story short, me being Captain Save him, I went to the store and I went and got like, you know, the stuff you buy when people are bereaving. You get sodas and chicken and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, um, my mom told me where they were having like the setting up or where they were meeting at. So I went over and, um, brought all the things for my condolences, cards, gifts, act to see if they needed anything. And, um, when I got there, I was very surprised. The only people that were there were he and his grandparents, not a whole bunch of people. So I had a lot of stuff thinking a lot of people would be there and they weren't. And so his grandpa greeted me and like kind of navigated me to where to park and everything. And he and his grandpa got all the stuff out of the car and they would not let me leave. They were like, come in, stay, baby, eat with us, then spend time. And they just were like very welcoming. His grandparents were like, come in. They were like so happy to see me and he was happy to see me. We all four of us ended up talking all night. I looked up, it's five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning. Where you gonna be? Not out on the corner, honey. So, it just flowed very natural. And it seemed like from that day of taking that stuff over there, I was reeled in, hook, line, and sinker. And it was the four of us, his grandparents and I. And so, it went from uh, me trying to go over there to be compassionate towards them, him and his loss, you're the only child, now you have no parents, you know what I'm saying? And to a whole situation and very complicated. So, um, after his 
parents were gone. He was in charge of his estate. Um, and because of his parameters and stuff like that, he had lots of rules with not being able to go places and stuff after a certain time. It seems like I was there all the time. Like when I got off of work, I would go there. We have to spend a lot of time at his place, a lot of time at his place. And so long story short, fast forward back to September when the baby is being born. So we are in the car minister renata and i again we've got balloons we got stuff we're getting ready to ride down this highway this boy is with me and my sister i'm driving he's on the passenger side and my sister is in the back seat and we're riding and me and her kind of having a conversation so he playing on his phone first he started texting i didn't say nothing but I thought I saw what I saw, but I wasn't sure if I saw what I saw. Because, you know, sometimes women, they very, very disrespectful. They'll send you any type of pic and, you know, know you in a whole relationship or whatever. So his auntie had put me on game. She told me that she was watching the surveillance cameras at the estate and she seen a lady coming over there while I've been at work. So he and his lady, neither one of them don't work. Both of them on, they was on the case together once I got to the bottom of all my investigation and stuff like that. But so, um, anyway, him and the lady on the phone texting each other. I'm driving. So me and my sister was talking and I've checked out of that conversation. My sister's still talking, but I'm watching him, watching him. And he's texting. So you in my car texting another woman. I ain't saying nothing. I'm mad by now. I'm driving on the 75. I went from 50, from like 70 miles per hour to 75. Now I'm driving 95 on the highway, roller, rolling, mad, streaming, streaming. I'm probably fogging up the windows by now. This Negro, and I don't want to say Negro, got his phone, picked it up, and called the lady. She didn't call him. He called her. And was like, um, so what you wearing? What? Uh-huh. Did you ask her what she's wearing in my car? Honey, before I knew it, I was tag team. Whoop, there it is, upside the head. I was beating that boy like, you know what I'm saying? Minutes were not stop. I'm going to kill him for sure. Get out my car. I'm like, get out my car. I'm trying to open the door. I'm beating him. I'm punching him. She didn't know. She didn't know. She wasn't privy to the texts. She didn't see what he was doing. And she did not hear what he said because she was talking. But I was listening, honey. And I just was tagging him, tagging him. I said, she, no, put him out. Don't do that. You got to, what up? Why don't put him out? Why I don't beat the stew out of him? Why he ain't getting out right now while I'm driving 100? I do not care if an 18 wheeler runs over him. They need to because he is roadkill to me right about now. But I digress. Honey. So she's like, just wait. Wait till we get to the hospital. Give him a chance to let somebody come pick him up because we don't need him. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You ain't sorry. You sat up here in my car. Talking to an old woman, asking her what she wearing, and you don't have no respect for me and no dignity for what I'm going through. Promise you, promise you guys, I didn't break up with him that day. I'm sitting here looking at myself, asking myself, why was I such a fool? I did not break up with him. Probably, we were together for two years, from 2014 to 2016. I was in the gym, fabulosity, doing my things, almost down to a 14. When I got done with that toxic relationship, I know beyond I know her, I was a 20 again. 
Ain't that something? I was a size 20 again. My face was fat again. I was darker than ever. Because when you're closer to God and you're in a pure state, your skin start to glow. You start to shut pop. You get so excited because you're happy. But when you ain't happy, you start looking dark and dull and your lights go out and you be consumed. Now, my boo came along. And when my boo came along, he was with somebody. I was with this joker. And we saw each other again after 11-year hiatus, after our miscarriage. And we got back together. And he dumped her. I dumped him. And we've been together ever since. And it has not been perfect. But I don't have to check his phone. I don't have to fight him. I don't have to yell and worry about cheaterization. Now, I got some boo stories, too. I really do. But I've come to a place in my womanhood and knowing who I am that it's certain things I'm not going to settle for. And you, as a curvy king or curvy queen, you have to get the confidence on the inside of you to know that you're not going to settle for certain things. And this video had to go on the channel because of the fact that you have to know who you are. And you have to know what you're not going to settle for. And you have to relax your standards. Honey, I could have killed me, my sister, and that boy. I could have given him brain injuries, beaten him in the head. So I don't advocate violence. Let's get that clear. But what I'm going to tell you is this. If I had not blurred the lines, if I had stuck to my standards and I would and I not compromise my values, then I wouldn't have ever allowed him to walk over me or to treat me the way that I that he did. So a lot of times you have to have and find joy within your own self and self-fulfillment in the fact of working towards your goals, your career, your dreams, figuring out what makes you happy, what makes you smile and finding self-love that is not contingent upon or dependent upon anyone else. Isn't that something? When you're getting in a relationship and we're talking relationships because this is Valentine's Day, honey. You are getting in a marriage. You have to be whole enough to become one. You're on a journey to wholeness. You got to be happy, self-sufficient, financially secure. You have to have everything you need within yourself. And then you look for another person or you not even look. Women don't have to look. Men, you, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. And so you as a woman are making yourself that good thing and you're preparing for that relationship. Now, he on the other hand, is preparing himself to be the priest of your house and to take care of you and you are going to be whole and he's going to be whole and these two holes are going to make one because if you're broken he's not going to be a czar bro engine engine number nine captain save him he's not going to come repair your credit do your this and do your that you have to be whole within yourself and he has to be whole and then you guys complement and add value to each other and y'all mesh well and make them the most harmonious love okay end of the story time goodbye pillows <laughs> now and I got Joe teeth. I'm going to go ahead and brush my teeth. Because sometimes that Joe be having your teeth looking yellow. I digress. So I started all these morning. I went over there and I checked on my boo. And him and Ari, they sleeping in. So I was like, I'm going to watch um, some of my favorite TV shows. And catch up while I do my devotional and do stuff like that. So I have.